Tiger style. Tiger style. Attention everyone. Tiger this style. is an emergency broadcast. The unpleasant noise you are about to hear coming from your radio is not a mistake. Please do not turn off your radio, but turn up the volume on your receiver as high as it can go so that you can make the sound we broadcast as loud as possible. <laughs> and the directness describes the attack of the animal kingdom's most feared predator, the tiger, whose major weapons are his powerful forepaws and razor-sharp claws, which, with a single swipe, can down a full-grown deer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to the Tiger's Den. It is Sunday, March 10th. 2024 AD. I did not write an introduction this evening, ladies and gentlemen, but I will do my best to ab lib because I just got done recording a special report, which I will post after the Tiger and Snake financial report this evening. It is quite the news. So I'm just going to hold it there and let you guys uh, check out the special report I just recorded as I was digging up information here. The pounds of flesh. I was out hunting the information down for you, ladies and gentlemen. I ran across some news that uh, I have not seen anybody report on. And I was curious as to why that was happening. It is a small victory, and we should be happy about it, celebrate it, and push for more small victories like this. So what I would like to say, ladies and gentlemen, is it is, again, like I said, it's Sunday, March 10th, 2024 AD. And um, tonight on the Tiger and Snake Financial Report, I am Angry Tiger. Franco Matei, otherwise known as Angry Tiger. And tonight on the Tiger and Snake Financial Report, we have the consumer drowning in the snake venom pool of credit card debt and debt in general. We will tell you all about that. We have a banking crisis that is looming. Um, of course, it's an intentional banking crisis because the Fed must consolidate the banks for the incoming CBDC that's going to crush our souls and make sure that we all stay in the doldrums and they can control every little thing that we do. Anyways, I want to tell everybody, thank you for coming to the show. I want to welcome the people in the YouTube chat. I've got Karen Carpenter. I've got uh, Little John, the Lumberjack of Liberty. Pat the Plumber, what's going on, brother? We have uh, in the other chat, we have Brian Taylor. What's going on? Good evening, sir. Glad to see you there. And Jason Barker of Knights of the Storm. White Wolf, what's going on? See you there, Karen Carpenter. I think I mentioned you too. Let's get into this. Um, wow. When I found that news out, it was very, uh, it was, it was pretty close to the time that we go on air here. So I'm sorry for being late, ladies and gentlemen. But I thought that it was important to point out these small victories because we all are are just so bludgeoned to death with, um, with horrible, horrible news. And while I'm talking to you, I'm going to type up the song of the week because I think we need, uh, I think that we need to uh, definitely play some music before we get into all this horrible news. Um, and this is one of my favorite songs, and I'm going to share it with you. Let's let's let, let's go over to the other screen so I can do this right. I can't even see what's going on. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all are doing well. I had a lot of fun last night with you all who were tuning into Tiger Tales. Um, it was a great great pep talk. We talked about hate and how to find hate in your heart and how to dispel it and uh, make it go away and mitigate it and deal with it. And we also in the nine o'clock hour on Tiger Tales we have a uh, request hour. And um, that is a lot of fun because I get to find out what you guys like to listen to. And it is really cool because I get to discover all kinds of new music. Now, this is not new to me, but it is one of my favorites. And I'm going to share it with you all. And oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Getting a little jiggy here. Forgive the shaky start, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, I just got done. Um, filming a special report and i thought it was mighty important so i did it we got to be able to 
to see the small victories. We've all been working very hard to spread the truth, and we deserve to see a small victory. It's not huge, but it was worth reporting on. So here we go. This is this is one of my one of my favorites. This is for the Fed, by the way, and all all the corrupt, garbage eating politicians, you know, who are feeding from the trough to corruption provided by the snake headed gypsy tin benders at the Federal Reserve. One fine day as I was a walking down the street, spot a beggar man with rags upon his feet, took a penny from my pocket. In his tin cup, pride it, drop it. And I heard him say as I made my retreat. May the bird of paradise fly up your nose. May an elephant caress you with his toes. May your wife be black with runners in her hose. May the bird of paradise fly up your nose. My laundry man is really on his toes Found a hundred dollar bill among my clothes When he called me I came running Gave him back his dime for phoning And I heard him saying as I turned to go In the bird of paradise fly up your nose In an elephant caress you with his toes May you wipe the flag with runners in her hose. May the bird of paradise fly up your nose. I was way behind one day to catch a train. The taxi driver said, we'll make it just the same. A speed cop made it with us, and as he rolled out the ticket, I stood by politely waiting for my change. May the bird of paradise fly up your nose. May an elephant caress you with his toes. May you act the flag with runners in your hose. May the bird of paradise fly up your nose. May the bird of paradise fly up your nose. Yes, and that was May a Bird, uh, May the Bird of Paradise Flap Your Nose by Little Jimmy Dickens. Um, I really like that song. It's a very polite way of saying F you. Excuse my French, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, it is absolutely uh, one of my favorites, and uh, I really, really enjoy it. Um, so let's get into this. Um, the whole thing that I'm seeing here as I was looking through the financial news is that we had another fake jobs report. We know about that. They'll, they'll revise the numbers a couple weeks later and none of the mainstream media will report on it. Imagine that ladies and gentlemen, that seems to be some kind of pattern going on, isn't it? Anyways. Um, but this is what's going on. Inflation, inflation, inflation. And I keep pounding on it because they keep pounding us with it. Every every Sunday or Saturday morning, I wake up early, bouncer the dude Ninja Hound dog who uh, patrols for varmints with tyranny on their breath and lice in their beards. He is here with me producing. And uh, we go on a little hike every morning on the weekends. And uh, and then we go on a hike in the afternoon. But we uh, you know, then we go grocery shopping. And that reminds me of how much it's making me suffer. And I know how much it's making all you good people suffer and our fellow countrymen and women are suffering. And it's just, it's not a good thing at all. Um, it's, 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 it's horrible. We have a little bit um, of a video here from a guy on Face the Nation. This is Gary Kahn. And uh, I might not be saying that right, but check it out. I'm going to play this video really quick. I thought it was kind of relative. Well, of course, we're going to have a stupid ad. There was we're going to skip it right now. We raise tax State rates, right? We raise tax rates, but you bring in all the loopholes that we got rid of. So what we tried to do when we wrote taxes is we tried to simplify it and we tried to get rid of all the loopholes that basically the wealthy people in America use. And that was a way that we tried to, to make the tax code fair. And the data shows that we've made the tax code fair. If you actually look at who pays taxes in this country, the bottom 50% of earners in the United States pay 2.3% of tax collected. 
and the top 10 percent pays over 70 percent of tax collected in this country that is that sounds like the exact opposite of what president biden described in the state of the union because he took aim at billionaires he said they pay a lower tax rate than teachers he proposed minimum taxes of 25 percent on billionaires how do you respond to that well I, I, again, I think you've got to take one little step back here. A billionaire is a measure of net worth. It's not a description of their taxable income. Mm -hmm. You could be a billionaire and have no taxable income. You could not have a billion dollars and have a high taxable income. So when you look at the way because people it could are- could be, you're just sitting on assets. You're just sitting on assets. And you could be sitting on illiquid assets, you could be sitting on liquid assets. We do a very good job in this country of taxing income. That's what the Constitution talks about. The Constitution talks about taxing your income. Mm -hmm. There is no... Whoa! Put the brakes on. One in the Sam Hill in the Constitution does it say we should tax your income. Now, I don't like this guy. I don't like what he's saying. I don't like any of it. But we're going we're gonna to continue on here and listen to him. I just, I just had to stop right there and, and throw in uh, my two cents, by the way. No income in this country unless you buy a tax-free bond that doesn't get taxed at a minimum of 20%, whether it's interest or dividends or capital gains. So there's no billionaire in this country that has income that is not paying at least 20%. But the president is tapping into at least a perception that wealthy people have um, far more of an advantage and that corporations are taking advantage of the little guy. I mean, he went down to the 10% fewer Snickers in the bag analogy he in did. his speech, basically saying you're getting ripped off. So uh, what do you make of, of that idea though? And, and the explanation he's trying to make for why people are experiencing inflation, even though the rate is coming down. Well, let's, let's talk about inflation for a minute because I think it's a really important concept for everyone to understand. Inflation has a compounding effect, meaning as you look at inflation year over year, you're adding up those numbers. You're not starting at a zero every year. So if we had 6% inflation last year, 7% inflation, and now we have 4% inflation, that's 10% inflation. So if you take a basket of groceries at the beginning of 2020, just a simple basic basket that cost $100, it costs well over $125 today because those 4% one year and 7% one year and 7% the next year, they add up, they're cumulative. So there's a huge cumulative effect inflation. So when people are being told, consumers, you're wrong, inflation's said, no, they're right. They're completely <laughs> right. They're completely expensive. right. And what they're more right about is we at least finally have gotten to the position where wage growth is faster than inflation. And what's, what he just said there about wage growth and inflation is, is total, total horse smoke. So the reason I played that video is because you did hear him say, okay, that inflation is compounding. Okay. And that, and we've explained that on the Tiger and Snake financial report. He's got it at 11%. Well, food inflation, Mr. Cohen, is at 18%. or probably north of that at this point. Okay. So I, I just wanted to point out the fact that somebody, even though the rest of what he said was full of holes, okay, and nonsense and horse smoke, okay, that, that inflation is compounding. It's a compounding figure you it's a metric that it's not stand it does not stand alone and when they do all these reports on the mainstream media and they're lying to the general public about inflation they're not telling them about the how it compounds year to year that's why if you come to the tiger's den or the tiger snake in the tiger and snake financial report okay is what we do is we 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 compound the inflation and we go to year to year we look at year to year numbers Okay, that's what I'm basing everything off of. So I just, you know, I wanted to point that out. And uh, what do we got here? Karen Carpenter says that two bags, two bags, $121 today. Yeah, I did my grocery shopping for Bouncer and I. And, uh, you know, the couple of nights a week, Mama Tiger and I have, have, have you know, eat together. And we're at, we're at $250, you know, just to feed ourselves every week. Um, White Wolf said inflation is ex an exponential function, not linear. That's correct. That's what I just said in Working Man's English. And uh, White Wolf has a calculation that since 2000 is about 250%. I'm not sure about that, but you're probably pretty close, White Wolf. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good look there. Um, I wanted to say something to you, ladies and gentlemen, really quick. We'll get back into the news here. And, and I, I'm, not, I'm not tooting my own horn, and I'm not tooting Jason Barker's horn. Um, 
but I'd like to point something out. We we all watch podcasts. We all watch the mainstream media. We're 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 a little bit ahead because our techniques of gathering information are a little bit different than 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 most people's techniques of gathering information. And if you want to stay on the cutting edge of things, tune in to the foxhole or Knights of the Storm. If you wanna, if you wanna stay on the cutting edge of the financials, tune in to the Tiger and Snake Financial Report because, um, and I, 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 I hate to say this kind of stuff, but I need to point it out: we're beating everybody to the punch. We're beating everybody to the punch, and I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of my my colleagues that I work with. I'm proud of my research team, Rhonda and Vince, and you know I've got Harlan Stonewall doing research for me. There's a lot of different people who are doing research for me. They they bring things to my attention. I, I'm looking at things. I'm bringing them to your attention. I'm bringing the things that they're bringing to your attention. I want to thank everybody for that. I want to thank everybody for their support. I just wanted to point that out. I know our audience, our viewing, our viewership is small, but please, if you can, like and share, like and share. Post it on Facebook. Post it on your Instagram. Post it on your TikTok. Whatever it is, get the information out there because. We're, we're, we're really on the cutting edge of some of this stuff. So I just wanted to point that out. And I, that's enough of me tooting my own horn. And just because I tooted my own horn, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and throw into, uh, hey, what's going on here? I'm going to go ahead and throw in the gong because uh, it, it's, it's, it's deserved. This is a gong for everybody. And a shout out to Chris Graves, the mastermind. Of the anyway, so on to the next story. Fed's Powell. Rate cuts likely this year, but more evidence is needed that inflation is tame. He's playing word games. He keeps playing word games with these people. The public, general public, they're just they're they're watching this, and if they're paying attention to the inflation and what the Fed is saying, their heads have got to be spinning around like the Exorcist at this point. I mean, seriously, there's got to be purple vomit coming out of every orifice in their head, their ears, their nose, their eyes, their mouth. Actually, it's money flying out of their heads. OK, out of every orifice, you know, this horrible green money that's it's just puking everywhere. These fiat Luciferian notes that we've been handed, oh, you know, handed to and said, here is some debt. Spend it. You know, this is it, it's got to be torture for them. They can't know what's going on. And that's why the, the economists in the mainstream, they keep getting everything wrong. How come Angry Tiger, who has zero degrees, zero <laughs> degrees in economics, in business, any of that? Just practical life experience and running my own businesses, okay? Self-taught. How come Angry Tiger knows all this? But, you know, Neil Cavuto, the, the, the cannoli king there, with the cannoli sticking out of his nose and his eyes and shoving them in his ears. And then Kramer, the powder, the powder donut king. You know, he really likes the powder donuts. They're really good powder donuts. Th these guys don't know. But Angry Tiger, the guy that rolls around in the Bondo dust five days a week, he knows about this. Why is that? And why do all of Angry Tiger's listeners know about this stuff? OK, I, I don't understand how these people get paid to be, be economists and analyzers of the economy when they, 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 they do such a pitiful job of it. You know, because they're carrying the water for the Fed. That's what the mainstream media is. They carry the water for the Fed. OK, they carry the water for for the military arm of the Fed, which is our military, the military industrial complex. They carry the water for the pharmaceutical industrial complex. Those are the people that are running this country. And they're in this incestuous relationship, like I keep saying at nauseum, between the banks, the Federal Reserve, and their banking cronies. Okay, there's one arm of it. Then you have the gigantic megacorps who get the laws written, so they, they, they're the ones that stay on top. It's basically a monopoly through, through legislation that we're looking at here. Okay, that you got them. And then, and then you have the federal centralized government, the Leviathan federal government, with their central plan planning. And it's just a big, fat disaster for the consumer. It is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, that's funny, uh, White Wolf. The lamestream media is Operation Mockingbird. The Federal Reserve is Operation Suck You Dry. That's about it. So let's get into this article really quick. I, I'm very hungry, and I have lots to do before the night's over. But I think Angry Tiger might take the day off work tomorrow just to just to relax a little bit. Got to catch up on some things around the house. Anyways, Chair Jerome Powell. Wait a minute, Chair Jerome Powell. Did I hear Jerome Powell? Is that is that who I think that is? Where is Mr. Jerome Powell? Where is he at? Uh oh no, I can't find it. Where is it? Where is he? The creature. Oh, there. <laughs> Uh, 
Yes, Jerome Powell, the creature from the Fed Lagoon, reinforced his belief Wednesday that the Federal Reserve will cut its key interest rates this year, but said it first wants to see more evidence that inflation is falling, sustainably back to the Fed's 2% target. Powell's comments to a House committee largely echoed that he made, made at a news conference January 31st. Since then, however, government reports have shown that inflation picked up from December to January, and hiring accelerated. Those signs suggest the economy remains hot, and the process of further slowing inflation will probably be uneven from month to month. You see, they have it in their heads, and I've reported on this. They have it in their heads that we must suffer when employment is good. Okay, and we know it's not. We know the unemployment is way higher than what they're saying, but they want us not to be able to buy anything and they don't want us to have jobs. Then, then inflation will go down magically and then they can, you know, they can cut the interest rates magically because then the consumer is crawling around on the floor dying. Okay. That's what they want. It's like a bomb went off again. You know, your eyeballs have been blown out of your head. You're looking around, you're on the ground, there's dust, there's smoke, there's bombs going off all over you and boom, what do they do? They kick you in the head again. They kick you in the head and that's what's going on. They're destroying the consumer. And it really, it really makes me angry, ladies and gentlemen. It's something that I, I just, I, I think about this because people are suffering. If you're a Christian, pray for our country. Okay. And even if you're not pray for our country. Okay. Because people are suffering. All right. And we're going to get into it as this report goes, goes down. Okay. Um, Paul's comments to, Okay. But Powell did not express concern about in the inflation data. Instead, he noted that according to the Fed's preferred gauge inflation, the preferred gauge that does not include food and does not include fuel, the preferred gauge that they move things in and out of to fit their narrative. I, I digress, though. OK, I'm going to keep going. All right. Uh. He noted that according to the Fed's preferred gauge, inflation has, has eased notably over the past year, even though it remains above the central bank's target. On the first, first of his two days of the se semi-annual testimony to Congress, Paul also suggested that the, the Fed faces two risks, cutting rates too soon, which could result in a reversal of progress in reducing inflation, or cutting them too late or too little, which could weaken the economy in hiring. The effort to balance those two risks marks a shift from early last year when the Fed was still rapidly raising its benchmark to rate to combat high inflation. The financial markets are consumed with, with divining the timing of the Fed's first cut to its benchmark rate, which stands at a 23-year high of about 5.4%. A rate reduction would probably lead over time to lower rates for mortgages, auto loans, credit cards, and many business loans. Oh, the credit card companies are loving this. Synchronicity raised it to 31%, maybe almost 32%. Most analysis and invest investors expect a first rate cut, the first rate cut in June through May, though May remains possible, Fed officials said after a meeting in December, projected that they would cut rates three times this year. In his remarks Wednesday, Powell offered no hints on the potential timing of rate cuts. Wall Street traders put the likelihood of the rate cut in June at 69%, according to future prices up slightly from about 64% a week ago. The Fed's chair's testimony to the House Financial Services Committee coincides with intensified efforts by the Biden administration to stem public frustration with inflation, which erupted three years ago and has left average prices well above where they were before. President, Biden, President Biden's bid for re-election will pivot in no small part over voter perceptions of his handling of inflation and the overall economy. Basically, what is going on? The reason I, I wanted I wanted you to see the horse smoke, the game that is being played. This is absolutely a horrible game being played. Occult Priestess, welcome to the show. Vince Agnelli, welcome to the show. Um, what is going on here is uh, a horrible, horrible thing. It's word, it's horse smoke. It's it's people pay attention to what this guy says. He is a deceiver. They raised the interest rates that did not help contract the money supply. They refused to contract the money supply by making the crooked banks hold on to a reserve. That would contract the money supply. Okay. But they won't do that. Okay. Because that would actually do something. Like I said, they're trying to rebuild an engine with with silly putty, a butter knife, and a spoon. They don't have the tools. They cannot do it. Okay. And right, there's shrinkflation going on too, White Wolf. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but <laughs> there's a lot of shrinkflation going on. You go into the store and things that were a pound, now they're 12 ounces, stuff like that going on. And they did refer to that in this article. But I, I, I'm not going to get into that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. Okay. 
And this is another big story. Okay, here's the here's the deal. Okay, beloved mall retailer retailer files Chapter Seven bankruptcy and will liquidate. It has been a brutal period for several popular retailers because people don't have any money. The follow and this is the disposable income. Uh, these businesses, which I'm about to tell you about, are disposable income businesses, and people don't have the money to waste on stuff like this right now. Okay, the follow up from the and they blaming the COVID pandemic scandemic and challenging economic environment have pushed numerous chains into bankruptcy with Tuesday morning, Christmas tree shops, Bed Bath and Beyond. All of them. Bed Bath and Beyond is huge. I don't know about in other states, but in Michigan, they're huge. Okay. This is something that all you beautiful ladies, they like to go to Bed Bath and Beyond and they buy all this nice stuff that smells great and lotions and perfumes and soaps and they have candles and they've been around a really long time. Okay, all these shops that I just mentioned, they are disposable income shops. Okay, and they are huge, huge retail chains. They're filing chapter seven bankruptcy. Why do I report on this? I report on this to show you the consumer is dying. They're dying. The snake headed gypsy tin benders have sent out the constrictor and the constrictor from hell from the, from the mercury laden pool that's in the bottom of the Federal Reserve, where they raise these snake headed Crimean demons from to strangle the life out of the consumer. Okay, that constricting snake, this gigantic boa of destruction, of financial and economic upheaval and destruction has wrapped itself around the consumer, broken its ribs, broken their bodies down to the point where now he can fit them, unhinge his horrible, evil jaw and fit them in his acid laden mouth and start to swallow them. It won't be long before we're all in the belly of this horrible beast being digested by its venomous stomach acid. I digress. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get so upset. I don't want to lose my cool. So I'm turning everything into, into word pictures for you, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, on, on to the next story. Another gigantic company laying people off. If you've been watching the Tiger and Snake Finance Report, you know people are getting laid off left, front, right, and center. It's horrible, all right? They're, dis they're disappearing faster than, than, than a Genoa salami, uh, pepperoni, provolone sandwich disappearing in Little Italy in New York, all right? This stuff is just evaporating. These people are evaporating. They don't have any money. That's, how, that's why they're laying people off. They're worried about their bottom line. Levi Strauss and Company lays over 140 employees off at the San Francisco headquarters. Levi Strauss and Co., one of the world's most famous fashion brands, is laying off over 100 employees at their California office. The company, known for its iconic blue jeans, announced 146 employees would be cut from their San Francisco headquarters. California staff cuts are unlike, unlikely to be the last. The company previously announced more widespread terminations are on the horizon. Levi has previously specu speculated that it will cut between 10 and 15 percent of its worldwide workforce in the first half of 2024. The part the cuts are a part of the company's global productivity initiative and are expected to take place over the first half of the year under incoming CEO Michelle Goss. The re I know that's a small number, but 10 percent to 15 percent over the course of the year is a big number, number one. And number two, another major, major, major company that has been around since 19 something, 1918 or whatever it is, maybe even before that, okay? They're having problems, okay? Because nobody has any money to buy their jeans at 30 and $40 a pair, okay? OP, Occult Priestess, check out Occult Priestess on YouTube. I think she has a rumble. Occult Priestess, why don't you throw a link in both chats? So I, got a, I got a rumble channel up too. Why don't you throw your link in both chats so people can find you? Um, she says gaming companies are doing record layoff too, layoffs too, because they're trying to get their bottom line right. And even the gaming companies, they're seeing people can't, it, a lot of games are by subscription, a lot of games that you buy, the things you buy in the games to get ahead in the games, they're not seeing the profits that they were before. So they're trying to adjust their profit margins so they remain profitable or they remain within the metric of what they call profitable. Okay, so this this is just another indicator. All economic indicators right now in this country are pointing towards quick and fast demise. Jason Barker, welcome to the YouTube chat. What's going on, brother? Uh, it's Bugs Pod and Beyond now. That's hilarious. 
Oh, wow. That's great. Hey, uh, I, this is good news. Thanks for letting me know that, uh, uh, Vince Agnelli. I got over 100 subs on YouTube. That subscription's on YouTube. Thank you very much. Please, ladies and gentlemen, share it. It's not going to hurt you. Angry Tiger, he's here trying to do the right thing. Believe me, genuine integrity and virtue. And, and you all have virtue. You're all self-sufficient, okay? You all have integrity and you're all competent. Those are things we need to be, all right? Don't let the new world order or whatever you want to call it, the elite, whatever you want to call them, don't let them steal this from you. You are powerful, sovereign individuals, unique to yourselves, unique to your families. You are precious to other people in your life. Be precious to yourself. Take care of yourself. Take care of your friends. Take care of your family. Love each other, guys, especially in this community. We got to stop the hate. We got to stop it. We got, you can disagree with people. Me and White Wolf had a pretty good disagreement last week. But it doesn't mean I'm not going to listen to White Wolf. That doesn't mean I'm forsaking White Wolf. I'm just using it as an example. White Wolf, please don't write, write another Substack article on me. <laughs> but I'm using it as an example because it's a good example. We still correspond. We are still friends. You see he is in the show commenting. And I am posting his comments. But we disagreed about something. But that's okay because I know, all right, that we agree about a lot more than we disagree about. And the stuff we disagree about, that's not the big deal. We're all on the same team. And thank you for reminding me about that, White Wolf. How's that? All right. Please, not another Substack article, though. Anyways, inflation is still weighing on the consumer, says retail expert. Julie Hyman and Joseph Lipton wrote this article, and this is out of Yahoo Money. Yahoo Money. That's a, that's a great name for the fiat currency. It's Yahoo Money. Okay, that's what it is. Before I get into this, I got to do uh, I got to do a commercial for our sponsor and and for our friend. And uh, you know, if you're trying to save your money, throw it into gold and silver. If you're trying to invest your money, not financial advice, by the way, check out the commodities. You know, you check out my videos. You see, you know, check out last week's video. I kind of point into the ETFs you want to get into, and they have dividends, so it's the, they they pay you for investing. <laughs> You work hard for, you your, work money. Hard for your money. The Federal Reserve can care Reserve less, about, care that. less about, that. about that. It's endless printing it's endless of fiat dollars fiat to support war, support welfare, welfare, and ever-expanding ever government. Expanding government. Your hard-earned money hard -earned becomes worth less every, less every day. You need a way to head to get head. runaway inflation. Runaway. Saving accounts Saving pay almost no interest, no and the stock market the stock is a roller coaster ride, a roller coaster ride of uncertainty. Don't let your savings or retirement, retirement be diminished by reckless speculators, bad fiscal policy, and endless printing of fiat dollars. Call Tony Arterburn Tony at Wise Wolf or visit WiseWolfHoldingSilver.com for a real world story vessel. Wolfpack is a monthly savings program that ships physical gold and silver to your door. It's a buyer's club that uses the strength of numbers to get alt pricing. Tony passes the savings on to you. Tony can roll over a IRA or 401k into a precious metals backed IRA. You can also help can with, also Bitcoin, help with Bitcoin, Bitcoin, if that's what you're in. Stop being robbed Stop by, being the robbed by the Fed and visit wisewolfgoldandsilver.com to secure your hard work or something that truly holds value. Wise Wolf Gold and Silver Exchange. New music, new classic music. artists. That's how we do it here at Modern Retro Radio. Radio. Lenny Kravitz Lenny has Kravitz just released has his 11th studio album. Here is the ever-enduring hot, hot genius, Beck. Giving you the latest, the latest from Cheryl Crow, Lindsey Buckingham, Marilyn Manson. This is garbage. This is garbage. A song called Blood for Robert Cray. He's Robert channeling Cray. Al Green. Channeling Al Green. Al Green. Al Green. Brand new music Brand from new music Parliament, from Parliament Funkadelic. Funkadelic. Back in the 1980s, Back in the 1980s and 1990s, 1990s, we knew him as Terrence as Trent Darby. Trent this Darby. is Taylor this is Dane. Taylor. You, know, Dane. You, know that, you know that group, uh, Foo Fighters? I'm vaguely really familiar with them, yes. The new album from Slash, Slash. Slash. Phil Collins, covers Slash. the four times. Metallica's 2016 Metallica's double album, Slash. Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Self Here we got Aerosmith with Beyond Beautiful. Beyond Beautiful. Yeah, check out Wise Wolf Gold and Silver, and uh, in the description of most of my videos, not today because I was in such a rush, um, you can go, you can find the tigersden.net, you can hit the coupon code, 
it'll take you to wise wolf gold and silver and you can uh you can get started into the wolf pack check out audi's radio station modern retro radio mixes things up a little bit you got hits that they don't play on the regular radio and uh, check out freeworld.fm tiger tales 8 p.m saturday nights and they have uh, a great schedule there Polynation into the microchasm with jimmy Jean. you got the infinite fringe with billy ray you got america unplugged there you got knights of the storm jason barker and the foxhole you got so many different you know different um broadcasts on there it is awesome it is 24 7 and uh you want to check it out freeworld.fn ladies and gentlemen now let's get into this story retailers such as target and footlocker are set to report their quarterly results this week storch advisor ceo jerry storch joins yahoo finance live to discuss the current state of the consumer storch the former ceo of toys r us in hudson's bay says so far the consumer has held up pretty well despite the resilience he notes that inflation is still real and other pressures remain so investors will be watching retail results for the very sharp eye retail earnings reported so far he says have been a mixed bag with no real breakout he points out that retailers focused on value have done well while others in the apparel and discretionary categories disposable income categories like i just said okay only i'm not the ceo of toys r us in hudson's bay okay have struggled quote unquote this divergence highlights the consumer's current emphasis on essentials and stretching their budget. Again, in working man's English, people don't have the money to spend on dis disposable income to spend on things. Okay, so that pair of jeans has got to last a little longer. All right, that that shirt's got to last a little longer. That 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 instead of going to Bed Bath and Beyond, they might go to like you know Walmart and buy their soap or or their beauty products because it's cheaper. All right. People are being budget conscious. I don't agree with all of this article because he says the consumer has held up pretty well. Well, yeah, we're going to run out of the deals. The deals are going to run out. The deals are going to get too expensive for us. That's where we're going. That's what worries me, ladies and gentlemen. That is the cry, the warning cry that I keep bellowing out. And I'm not going to stop because we are under attack. We are under financial attack. Okay. A uh, spiritual attack, physical attack. Everything is fake. Everything is poison, bioengineered. Everything is sucking away the power process, which we're supposed to fulfill. Okay. And they're draining the three cups that we need full our spiritual cup, our physical cup, and our intellectual cup. They're being drained. They're making us tired. Okay. They're beating us into the ground with a sledgehammer. And it's a horrible thing to witness. And it's a horrible thing for us all to live through. That's why we have to keep our spirits up. We have to find the things in life that are simple. Take joy in the sunsets, the sunrises, okay? Take joy in your family. Take joy in your grandchildren and your children. Take joy in your friends. Lap that up. Forget the, new, the newest tech thing, the video games, the, you know, the garbage that's on TV, unless you're watching old westerns. But enjoy life. Enjoy the simple things. Enjoy the call of the birds. Enjoy the, the sweet spring breeze and the smells that run across and into your nose. These are the things that will make you rich. You are a rich person if you have friends and family and character and virtue. You are truly rich. And I'm telling you this on my financial report. This is terra firma. These things are not fake. They are real. Embrace them, ladies and gentlemen. Embrace them. So on to the next story. Even wealthy Americans are racking up credit card debt. Here's how to avoid it. I'm not going to read the story. I pulled this up, okay, because I wanted you to see the headline. This is from the Mountley Fool, okay? I might, let, let's see here. I'll, I'll read a couple of paragraphs of it for us, all right? But this is something I've been reporting on. We, the American consumer is $17 trillion in debt, and that's not, money that the federal you know we owe to the fed that's not money that we owe to another country those are individuals who have debt to a bank okay or a, a loan company or any of that stuff that's all debt all right we think about consumers with credit card debt we may be inclined to imagine lower or moderate earners who rely on the ability to change to charge expenses in the absence of having the money on hand do not do that but it may surprise you to learn that 24% of wealthy households racked up debt in 2023. I'm, I'll tell you in a second. According to a survey by Eldman Financial in Engines, of course, credit card debt is problematic no matter, no matter what your income, since it has the potential to cost you a lot of money in interest. It can also cause damage to your credit score if you rack up too much of it, so it pays to take these steps 
to avoid credit card debt going forward. I don't need to go through those steps. I'll tell you, don't use the damn thing. If you have one, you use it for an emergency, okay? That's, a, that's what you do. Chris Graves, welcome to the show. Glad to see you there, brother. We did a shout out for you earlier. We did a great Mastodon raw for Chris Graves, the Mastodon of researchers. Glad to see you there, brother man. Anyways, don't use that. I told you, the easy credit, which I'm going to get to the next store. There's a story in here about easy credit, a new scam you got to look out for. The easy credit is not a helping hand. It is a sh double barrel shotgun to blow your economic head off. You're going to grab the barrel of the shotgun. You're going to put it in your mouth and those bastards are going to pull the trigger. Don't let them do it. Don't let be smart. Be smart. Don't put your vacation on a credit card. Don't take a vacation. If you can't afford it, don't do it. Do something else. Get your family, get them in the car, go down to the local state park. All right. Go fishing with your kids. Go hunting with your kids. Go foraging with your kids. All right. So on to the next story. Boy, I'm fired up today. Man, really, really irritating news that I look at. 28% of middle income, uh, middle income Americans are reliant on credit cards today. Here's how to break the cycle. Again, 20, that's the number. All right. The past few years have been challenging for U.S. consumers. Really? Really? Thank you for pointing out the obvious Mount Me Fool. They're good and bad. You know, it depends who's writing. You can tell who writes with an Austrian economics viewpoint and who writes with a Keynesian economics viewpoint. The Keynesian way of doing things is the way to walk into quicksand. All right. And there's no way out once you get into it. Okay. The past few years have been challenging for U.S. consumers. First, there was a massive unemployment crisis fueled by the scandemic. Following that, there was a pandemic. I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing. Following that, there was a period of rampant inflation that still hasn't quite settled down. All told, many consumers have been forced to rely on their credit cards to cover their expenses, and middle earners are no exception. And this is what I've been reporting on. This is what I've been telling you, all right? And it's the inflation, going back to what I was going to say in the last article. If you're poor, it's devastating you right now. If you're middle class, it's hurting you. You're burning through your savings. You're probably doing some creative financing using credit cards and savings to maintain your standard of living, okay? instead of making an adjustment downward, okay? Standard of living is a relative way of saying something. And I just I just explained to you what real living is, okay? What real things are, what real commodities are in your life, why you really are rich, okay? So your physical, your asset asset standard of living, your, your, um, your mundane standard of living might go down, but your spiritual standard of living, you can raise it no matter how much money you have in your pocket. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that. So as the standard of living, they try to keep up with their standard of living. Okay, the, the middle class is dipping into their credit cards, dipping into their savings, maybe doing some creative financing with both of them. I know a lot of people who are, are pulling from their 401ks to get things done. Okay, I'm seeing this in my own life. And the reports are terra firma in, in the financial news. Okay, but the alt, the, the rich people, the people who are earning over 250000 up to 500000 I have a couple of friends like that. They are now starting to feel the squeeze. Even they, it's just 24%. You just seen it in the last article. They're feeling the squeeze. It just depends how high on the economic ladder you are. That's how soon you will feel the squeeze. Okay, that's how all this works. Not a good thing. I, it, not a good thing. Anyways, you guys are cracking me up in the chat over there. I'm trying not to look at it. <laughs> St. Nelly's killing me over there. Anyway, delayed payments. This is the new scam. Delayed payments by Americans have triggered the first dip in credit card scores in a decade. Delayed payments by Americans are credit card adoption has swayed people away from cash as they offer the convenience of purchasing apparel, electronics, all the garbage I was just talking about, and almost anything online with freedom to pay later. But this comfort also can also backfire as missed card payments can rapidly snowball into a massive pile of debt. Americans are increasingly struggling with huge credit card bills since they earn less and run out of cash after paying rent and clearing bills, after which they turn to credit cards for shopping, but do not have a plan of action to clear the dues that are owed. And it's basically, I like the fact that they pointed this out. What's her name? Kritika Vahita. 
That her name rhymes. That's pretty cool. I wish I wish I had my name that rhymed. What it would be Franco the Banco. Anyway, my name means freedom in Italian, by the way. Anyways, this uh this lady pointed it out. She pointed it all out. She pointed things that I point out, and it's encouraging to see something like that. She 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 sees what's going on. I just explained it 30 seconds ago. Okay. And she just explained it in this article, which is why I pulled the article up. Our credit card debt threatens to swamp our savings. Here's how to deal with both. Again, the nation's mounting credit card debt threatens to swamp its savings. More than one third of Americans, 36%, have more credit card debt than emergency savings. Do you see the narrative here, ladies and gentlemen? They are killing the consumer. They are taking knives and they are cutting their throats. That's what they're doing to the consumer. They're killing them. They're crushing us. They're blasting our faces right off of our necks. All right. Our heads are rolling. They're all the way over there in my backyard right now. Okay. The heads are rolling all over the place. This is a nightmare. They're killing us. It's not good. Pat the plumber. Great comment. Two kids now, I've turned 18. I swear that the day credit cards started in the mail. Nothing has changed. They are predatory, 100%. 100%, brother. As soon as they turn 18, they come after you. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may declare bankruptcy. That's a good one, White Wolf. That is absolutely. And uh, Karen Carpenter agreeing with Mr. Uh, Pat the Plumber, who is a badass. All of you are badasses listening, by the way, and commenting. That it makes sense, and it is truly disgusting, Karen Carpenter. So... We're going to go on to the next story as we are rapidly running out of time. This is kind of a good story, I think. And again, you might get angry at me for saying these things, but I'm going to say them. The people on the left sooner or later are going to catch up to this. They're going to get it and they will get it. And you guys want to call them your enemy. They are misled country men and women. Okay. Just like the conservatives and the Repulsicans are misled country men and women okay they're all misled all right so you pray for them okay especially if you know some of the so-called christians out there you need to pray for your enemies okay that's what you're supposed to do it is not a sign of weakness like i was talking about on tiger tales last night love is the most powerful thing that we have in our spiritual and earthly realm love will destroy all evil and what we are facing is evil and even though the people on the left okay don't know what kind of evil they're dealing with they're facing it too okay so i am not about the division thing now i will go off the rails about stuff that they do i will i will i will admonish and chastise when i see ridiculous things but that doesn't mean i hate them you can't get the hate out of your heart ladies and gentlemen we're all in this together Okay, you want to get mad at me for saying that? Go ahead. You don't like what I say? Don't watch. Don't listen. Prepping for disaster diversifies as more Americans lose trust. Longmont, Colorado. Brooke Morgan surveyed booths at the Survival and Prepper Show in Colorado that were stocked with boxes of ammunition, mounds of trauma medical kits, and every type of knife imaginable. A self-described, listen, ladies and gentlemen, a self-described 30-year-old lesbian from Indiana, Morgan is one of the new breed of Americans getting ready to survive the political upheaval and natural catastrophes and economic catastrophes, a pursuit that until recently was largely associated with far-right movements such as white nationalists since the 1980s. This person who's writing this is an idiot, but I'm going to go on. Yes, I called you an idiot. Who are you? you know, uh, Brad Brooks, you ever want to get on the Tiger's Den from Reuters and, and debate me on anything? I'll, I'll, I'll chew you up and spit you out. I will chew you up and poop you out of the other end of my bushy tail. Anyway, <laughs> getting a little wacky over here in the Tiger's Den. That's because I'm hungry. Powerful hungry, as Hoss would say. Researchers say the number of preppers has doubled to the size of about to the size of about 20 million since 2017. Much of that growth is from minorities and people considered left of center politically, whose sense of insecurity was heightened by Donald Trump's 2016 election in the COVID-19 pandemic. More frequent extreme weather and the 2020 racial justice protests following the murder of George Floyd. I'm really surprised by the number of people of color here, Morgan said. I always went to these shows with my family in Indiana, and it was just white people who were where my parents my age. There are a lot of younger people here too. It's a real change. Morgan grew up in a prepper family and still considers herself herself self-reliant and ready to handle a disaster. 
but she left the prepper world of her youth behind and part of the escape of conservatism associated with the movement. Do you see how we avoid certain things because it's associated with the left and the left avoids certain things because it's associated with the right. And these things are good for everyone. Okay. And I don't like the slant of this article at all. Okay. I'm not promoting the slant of this article. Okay, it's not George Floyd. It's not racial injustice. It's not Donald Trump. If you're a human being living in this country, your sense, your instincts that God gave you are firing off saying, alert, alert, danger. You are in massive trouble. We are all, we are going to die. Damn, damn right. All right. It's not about all this other garbage that this left wing, you know, guy who wrote this article wants you to think it is. But I want to point this out. I'm going to put the correct spin on this article. People know, even people on the left, they know they feel something's wrong. Something bad is going to happen. They're preparing themselves. Again, I know you guys want to hate everybody on the left. Not all of you. Okay. But this is folly in thinking. We have things in common. We can, if we don't have discourse, we will never be able to stand up against the tyrants. If the human unmasked, the, consti- the, the aggregate of this country stand up together for 30 seconds, they're done. The elite are done. And staying in these echo chambers and hating other people is not going to get that done. We need to find a way to cross the damn bridge. That doesn't mean that you acquiesce all of your morals, all of your character, or what you believe. But you got to be a little bit more on the side of, hey, let me, let me see what we have in common. All right? Or we're never going to get from under this trap. We are in an acid trap from hell. Anyways, man. Stay tuned because I got a Funny Bugs Betty video coming up. <laughs> Central banks navigate economic recovery with cautious optimism. Lately, the big talk in finance has been all about how the central banks around the world, around the world, are trying to juggle two huge tasks, keeping inflation in check and making sure the economy keeps growing. Whether we're looking at the Federal Reserve in the United States, the Bank of Canada, or the European Central Bank, it's clear they're all deep in some pretty tricky business. Tricky business, to say the least, exactly, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very tricky business. They're working hard to navigate these choppy economic times, making decisions that impact not just their own countries, but the whole global economy. Jay Powell's talk with Congress and the Bank of Canada's latest comments have made one thing pretty clear. Don't hold your breath for interest rate cuts in the U.S. or Canada anytime soon. But looking ahead to the second half of 2024, it looks like the BOC just might cut rates at the Bank of Canada more aggressively than the U.S. People are also expecting the exchange rate between the U.S. dollar and Canadian dollar to rise to $1.40 by the end of the year, showing that they're really thinking about how hard how hard about easing off the money and policy might play out. When it comes to making decisions based on data, both the Fed and the BOC are on the same page. Powell, for example, isn't rushing to cut rates. He wants to see more data to be sure inflation is cooling before making a move. The super careful approach is also seen in the BOC's Announcements, despite some good news on jobs and the economic activity, they're still worried about inflation sticking around. So there is no good inflation news on jobs. That's a bunch of horse smoke. But like I said, the reason I pulled this up, it is every Western country around the world is being devastated by inflation. And even the biggest producers in the world, because we're all consumers now, China is feeling the crunch. Okay, because we're not buying as many goods and services from them. Even the Saudis are feeling the crunch, which we're about to get into. Okay, here's another story. Banking crisis looming, ladies and gentlemen. Caution, get your money out of those burning buildings. I'm telling you right now. Okay, and that is not financial advice. U.S. banking sector draws speculation amid the BTFP closure. What is the BTFP? The BTFP is the bank faking liquidity, the central bank loaning money to the other banks to fake liquidity. The reason they're ending the BTF program, some call it the the repo bond market as well as tied in with this. The reason they're doing that is because they're getting ready to consolidate the banks. Maybe five major U.S. banks will survive this consolidation after they end this program. It is not a good thing. As the Federal Reserve's bank term funding program approaches, they have to fund the banks because the banks are illiquid. 
They're illiquid. They don't have your money in there. It's fractional reserve banking. It's not real. It's a phantasm horse smoke circus. All right? It's as fake as, as professional wrestling or Hallmark movies. Anyways, the financial sector is in a buzz as the BTFP uh, approaches its conclusion. Speculation and concerns about potential ramifications launched in response to the banking collapses of March 2023. That's going to make the banking collapses of March 2023 look like a hiccup. The BTFP served as a critical lifeline for struggling institutions, including regional banks like New York Community Bank Corp and commercial real estate lenders. This is the 1921 Farmers Depression all over again in real time here in 2024. Okay, I'm not going to get too much further into this article because what is happening is the repo program and the RT and the BTFP program is ending. This will collapse regional banks and mid-sized banks and smaller banks. And then the big boys are the only ones that are going to be left. And that's they, they, they have us in the right position to introduce the CBDC in their hopped up Fed now system that they created for the CBDC. I'm going to get out of this really quick because I want to check the rumble chat, which I've been ignoring. I'm sorry, guys. It's been a very busy, very, very busy uh, evening for me. Brian Taylor, what's going on? He says, um, the gaming companies have gone totally woke. It's a dying industry, and they are pandering to the ESG crap. Opossum King, what's going on? VRP headsets are flying off the shelves. Yeah, unbelievable, dude, what's going on with that. All right. Um, who else? Brian Taylor. We got Levi from Nero Weights, Nero uh, Ministry. Uh, the financial beast system of financial geoengineering, pharmaceutical, Pharma, pharmaceutical, political, religious technology aspects is really taking its toll on people. So many instead trapped and rooted in idolatry. I agree with you 100. Uh, Real Jason Barker. The school system has been working on dumping, dumbing down as well. Levi for 75 years or so. He's responding to Levi. Oh, uh, Possum King. AI and Chat GTP teachers expected to replace humans next year. That is scary as hell, Possum King. My goodness, not a good thing at all. What else do we have here? Who else do we have in the chat? Gardner Goldsmith. The idea of companies to the uh, idea of comparisons to other cur currencies as a way to measure whether the Fed changes rates is nuts. I agree with you 100 percent on that. Gardner Goldsmith also goes on to say the U.S. policies are their own problem. They can't excuse their problems by comparing them to other worse off currencies. Isn't that a joke card? Isn't that ridiculous that they would do that? Uh, we got a new. Uh... We got a new uh, viewer here. Um, I'm going to try to pronounce this. Lol Lions. Hope I didn't butcher that. Welcome to the show. Glad to see you there. Um, thank you for viewing. Donald J. Trump speak about COVID-19 and 5G radiation. Everyone needs to know the truth. So join the channel and share. So he dropped a link to his channel in there. That's cool. Um, I'm going to come on your, your channel and drop my link too. It's good for the goose is good for the gander. Glad to see you there either way. You're probably putting out some good information. Anyways, is that a spammer, JB? I don't know. We don't know if it's a spammer or not. We'll check it out. Check it out, Jay. Click his link. See what's up. Let me know. We'll go visit him in his Rumble channel and drop links. <laughs> Anyways, if they're like-minded like us, drop the link in my chat. I have no problem with that. No problem whatsoever. What do we got going on on YouTube? Yes, everybody, hit the like. All right? Hit the like. Don't forget. The government foreign banks, AT, they live on our generous tax dollars. That's right, because me and Vince Agnelli reported, okay, on these foreign banks that were, were constructed to take our foreign aid. They were built to take our foreign aid and created so they could take foreign aid. Thank you for reminding me of that, Mr. Agnelli. Ah, uh, White Wolf, the banks were consolidated the day you could take your ATM card, drive two states over, and use it. I get what you're saying, White Wolf, but this is going to be an even worse um, uh, worse uh, bank consolidation. Thank you, Karen Carpenter, for talking me up in um, Jimmy Jean's chat. A lot of smart people over there. We're going to keep rolling here, and uh, we'll, we'll be out of here in a couple of minutes. Um, not Probably 10 minutes past the hour, you're all going to be not watching Angry Tiger. But I will be posting a very special report. Remind you about that at the end of the show. Um, Saudi oil giant sees sharp fall in profits. I read the article. Okay, basically, I'm going to sum it up for you. They're going to cut production. That's going to make the price of oil go up, along, along with the destruction that's going on, the Palestinian genocide that's going on in the Middle East. And I would also like to point out that today, um, Hezbollah out of Ira out of uh, Lebanon 
launched a bunch of missiles into Israel, that's only going to heat things up. Okay. It's going to be horrible. It is going to be horrible. Not a good thing. That's heating things up. The war, they love the war. The central banks love the war. They're using the, using the Rothschild formula, okay, to propagate the war. So Saudis are even being affected by the, the lull in retail sales from the Western economies and the production and the demand of oil. All of that ties into each other. China's economy doing bad. The Saudis doing bad. This is all because the American consumer and the Western, the Western nations, the Western bloc, the swift nations, their consumer, their middle class, the, the backbone of what makes the global economy go around are suffering and dying. And they're not spending as much money, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I pull these articles up to prove that point. It's very important that we understand how all this crap works. Okay. I wanted to show you the 10-year yield. Okay. This was today. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. This is off the market. This is while the market's not open. Sell-off going on. Okay, and then what happened? The Fed bought more. The Fed bought more. The last five days, look at this. Boom, boom, boom. It was high. Started off super high. We were at 4.21%. And it went all the way down to 4.65%. Okay, that means the Fed is buying the bond debts. They're buying the debt. They can't let the bond market go out of control because then the stock market goes out of control. Then everything falls apart. And like I keep explaining, when the stock market falls apart, okay, it hurts us. When the stock market raises, the middle class and, and, and the poor, they don't get a benefit from that. All right. It's the elite who own 90% of the stock market. The private investors, they're not, you can't get mad at some guy who's privately investing and making a, a humble living doing it. Those aren't the guys to get mad at. It's the elite. The people who I explained last week are selling off stocks, the hedge fund people, the Zuckerberg, the, the Bezos. Okay, the Warren Buffetts of the world. Okay, Friday we closed at the S and P 500 was down 33 points. Nasdaq was down 279 points. Okay, Dow Jones was down 68 points. Doesn't they're still all in record high territory? Okay, the dollar down very little, not even a not even like five percent. Okay, 0.7 percent, not even a whole percentage rate. Volatility volatility index went up a little bit, and when you see the volatility index go up, that's because all these other ones went down. Okay, the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones a little bit. Those things coincide with each other, ladies and gentlemen. Tech stocks, they went down a little bit, except Apple went up. Maybe somebody bought up some of the stuff that uh, that Buffett dropped down. Oil, down to 77.31. Okay, that's not going to stay there, ladies and gentlemen. Gold hit a record high earlier this week at 21. Yeah, I don't think this was the record high it hit. Okay, but it was up five. It's going up now. We're at 2018. One two thousand one hundred eighty three dollars an ounce. Silver at twenty four thirty eight an ounce. You see, precious metals will never dip below fiat currency. They will always be worth more. That's where you save your money. Bitcoin at sixty eight thousand dollars. I need to check my Exodus wallet and see what is going on in there. Get that profit out of there and buy more DBO. Okay, which went down a little bit because it coincides with the oil. Long planning, ladies and gentlemen. Commodities, not financial advice. Again. Commodities, JEPQ is another good one. Another good way to get into energy. All right. That's not financial advice. Okay. All right. But that's where we're at in the markets. Ladies and gentlemen, that was great. Go to the tigersden.net, hit wolfpack.gold. It'll take you over to the wise wolf. You got my coupon code in there. Join the wolf pack. That'd be great. We're going by a Jesus 2020 sign or throw a tip, and I'll do more and more videos and more and more research. As I am, as, as time allots me to and improve the program. So thank you for your support. Thank you for sharing and liking. Here is some Bugs Bunny to, to get this nasty taste out of my mouth. This is one of my favorite ones.
And that that was that was great. Nobody can beat Yosemite oh, Sam. Sam. That was great. Stop steaming up my tail. That's like my favorite part of that. Um, just like the bowl, the way he looks, the posturing, the blood red eyes. It's just a that's just a great one. I love it. The, yeah, Jason Barker says this means war. I love that. Um, again, I want to thank everybody. Don't make sure I didn't miss anybody in the Rumble chat. Um, Handy, what's going on, dude? Glad to see you there. Opossum King. Uh, Levi, narrow way, narrow gates. Brian Taylor, glad to see all of you there. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Gardner Goldsmith, and who else? Did I miss anybody else? I am not seeing that I missed anybody else. That is good. Everybody in the uh, YouTube chat, White Wolf, Rhonda Tape, it's Agnelli, Jason Barker again, Little John, the Lumberjack of Liberty, Karen Carpenter, White Wolf, Occult Priestess, Pat the Plumber. I want to thank you all very much. And I also want you guys to remember, Time is your most valuable commodity. Remember, try not to waste it. Cherish it. Use it wisely. Spend it doing something you love with someone you love. Improving yourself. Preferably all three of those things. Ladies and gentlemen, as soon as I get off air here, I am going to post a special report to my Rumble channel and YouTube channel. So be sure to check it out. Some good news. A small victory. And I want to leave everybody with that. Thank you very much for viewing. And ladies and gentlemen, until we meet again. Your time is your most valuable commodity. Cherish it and use it wisely. Until we meet again.